Oh, I'm sorry, was a movie happening? The Myth of the American Sleepover, released in 2010 and is directed by David Robert Mitchell, who has also directed such films like Virgin, Under the Silver Lake, and It Follows. And this film is starring Blair Sloma, Marlon Morton, Amanda Bauer, Brett Jacobson, Nikita Ramsey, and Jade Ramsey. The American Sleepover is about four young people who navigate the suburban wonderland of Metro Detroit looking for love and adventure on the last weekend of summer. That is the plot synopsis that is listed on IMDb for this movie. Thank God it's there because, honestly, I couldn't tell you what this movie was or who the people are in the movie or what happens in the movie. Basically, this film examines the real-life life of adolescence, of an adolescent teenager, a coming-of-age tale, and really just all of the chemicals and all the crap that's moving and turning and shifting in their bodies that makes them do pretty kind of creepy and pervish things. I guess it seems pervy and creepy as an older person watching this film, but then you remember as a kid, like, no, I was a horny teenager too, so yeah. I think we all were. This is pretty standard stuff. And why this film has any acclaim to it was because it was a film that debuted at South by Southwest in 2010, so if you can make it there and people tend to like it there, you, there's word of mouth that goes around saying, hey, check out this nice little indie flick. You can tell this is indie filmmaking, the actors that we have here. I've never seen before. I guess the only one of them is one of the Ramsey's twins who appeared in Picard, the TV series, a couple of years ago. Everyone else are legit teenagers, and you can tell that this is the first time they've been on camera. I'm saying dialogue. <laughs> I'm saying dialogue again. <laughs> Let me start off with the positives of this film. If you are looking for a realistic, naturalistic, slice-of-life look at adolescence and reminding yourself what it's like to be a teenager in middle school, or if you don't have middle school, like 6th grade through 8th grade, if you want to remember what that's like, Go ahead and watch this movie. It is a very, very, very accurate portrayal. Kids who are too old to be called kids, but also too young to be called adults. They're just in that in-between area, or as they call them, teens. So they're kind of still doing kiddish stuff, but also trying to venture into more adult things, like parties and watching movies with, with nudie scenes in them, or hiding your Sports Illustrated underneath your mattress so that you can read it late at night by yourself. Also having a boyfriend, but also, you know, being young and curious, making out with someone else's boyfriend, and then dealing with the ramifications of that. It's just, you know, remember all that stuff? I also like the filming locations. I like the atmosphere that we get here because it does feel like a Michigan city. Definitely the suburban side of Detroit, but really all, all the trees, the overcast, the changes in weather. Yeah, this feels like Michigan to me. I'm on the west side of the state. This was filmed on the east side of the state. And for all of those people not from Michigan, the great thing about living in Michigan is I can do this and tell you, hey, this film was shot here. I live no other state can do that. Well, I guess California can. You just hold up your forearm and just go like, hey, I'm here for now until all the earthquakes makes us go ee. But other than the idea of this film and where it's located, you know, just for me personally, I have nothing positive to say about this film, really because I don't know what the point of it was. And that's the thing with naturalism. It's there to provide a slice of life as real as possible look at someone's life and show it to people and show it to audiences. Which is all, you know, fine and dandy, but for me, the most important thing is plot and characters. If you give me a story that I can sink my teeth into and characters that I care about, I will care more about your movie. Here, I get none of that. It's teenagers who are casually walking around emotionless on their face, wanting to meet up with a girl so that they can be together forever. 
until they're not, or it's about another teenager who really wants that adult life and tries to go after, you know, older boys because they get to drink beer, which I don't know how they get to drink beer or how they have access to it, because those older guys are definitely not over 21. It's a lot of scenes that are just awkward, and I get that being a young teenager is very awkward, and you experience all of these awkward occurrences. This entire movie, I I've been there before. I know exactly where these characters are coming from, but that's the problem. I've been there before. I don't want to relive it again. <laughs> Being a teenager sucks. I say to all of my friends who tell me that they're teaching middle schoolers, I'd say, God bless you. Because that's when all the chemicals are going and starting and uh, people are just you know, raging horny and you have to deal with that. God bless you. But again, I don't want to relive that. These characters aren't doing anything that makes me get behind them or makes me intrigued by the outcome of their story, by the outcome of this weekend. Which is also very frustrating because... When you're a teenager and it's the last weekend before the start of the next year of school, yeah, you want to do something fun, and I remember wanting to do something fun too. I just want to reach through the camera and just tell these people, it's like, just don't worry about it. You're going to forget all of this in like a couple of weeks. Just... Don't make such a big deal about it. Don't film yourself. There's no reason to make a movie about this last weekend before the next school year. Because it all fucking doesn't matter. And where are the parents of these children? I sound like a freaking curmudgeon saying that. But watching this film, I think I only saw one adult in this entire movie. And that was a mother grocery shopping with her kid who was making awkward glances at another girl that he's seen in school. Other than that, these kids are home and there are no parents. Did all the parents also take a long weekend where they would, like, go up north and just screw each other and left their kids alone in their cabins in Detroit? You know, because teenagers, they're gonna be responsible with that. I was looking for something different than the stereotypical college, young adult, coming-of-age films that we usually get. You know, comedy is like Van Wilder or American Pie. Something different that really portrays realistic adolescence and... I guess, honestly, that is what we get here. I guess I should say be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. And here, I got it. I got a realistic look at adolescence and I don't want that. <laughs> I take it back. I don't want to see that. I hated my teenage years and I don't want to be reminded about teenage years because, again, being a teenager sucks. I picked this up at a resale shop because... I don't know, the cover looked intriguing, and it was something I'd never heard about before. It had on here, hey, South by Southwest, that's cool, indie filmmaking, and it's $2.88. <sighs> Honestly, I wish I'd get that $2.88 back. I'm gonna give The Myth of the American Sleepover one out of five Blu-rays. What? No! All right, run now comes my favorite part of my videos where I randomly select which movie I'm going to be watching next. And I'm going to be selecting from the list of all the recommendations that I've received from all of you out there, subscribers, donators out there who have given me recommendations over the years. So let's take a look. Cineducti, Cineducti, New York. I think that's how you say it. Recommended by Bill Keyes. Thank you very much, Bill. Uh, this is a movie I, I think is starring Philip Seymour Hoffman. I've never seen it before and never heard about it before. It, was this a movie, like one of the last movies that Hoffman made before he passed away? It was here 2008, so I think that was couple years before he passed away. I think he had other things before that. But I don't know a ton about this movie. All I know is that it's starring Philip Seymour Hoffman. Seems like a very dramatic piece, a very strange piece, and uh, it says here that it was recommended. It was a comment left on my Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind review, so I would assume that it may be as weird and quirky and up is that one. So we'll check it out next time. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, you can make a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do, just attach your movie recommendation with your donation, and if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, give you a shout out on the channel, and get my review of it published as quickly as I possibly can. So guys, if you've seen The Myth of the American Sleepover, what did you think about it? Or even better yet, 
What's a favorite sleepover story that you have? Because I'm sure it's going to be more intriguing than the movie that we got here. But whatever you thought, comment below. Let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time I'm releasing my movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of Sindukiki New York or whatever it's called. But in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.